Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to review the Los Gatos, California real estate market analysis for January of 2009. My name is Robert Whitelaw, and I'm a licensed real estate broker in the state of California. I'm also a member of the National Association of Realtors, a certified EPRO, and I am also the president and CEO of Whitelaw & Sons Real Estate Services, providing real estate services to all of Silicon Valley. Now, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the supply and demand numbers for Los Gatos, January 2009. And as always, we'll start with the inventory numbers. Now, as we can see, the inventory numbers have continued to increase ever since 2006. Uh, for a while there, it was looking like Los Gatos was resisting a lot of the influences of the down market. And But despite the fact that we see these increasing inventory numbers, which really accelerated between 2008 and 2009, other numbers were really offsetting that trend and still uh, allowing uh, Los Gatos to shine as one of the communities in Santa Clara County that was really doing well. Now, our most recent data shows that from January of 2008 compared to January of 2009, inventory has increased by 54.9%. That's 56 more homes uh, in the inventory in January of 2009 at the same time last year. That gives us a grand total of 158 homes currently on the market in Los Gatos. Now, if we uh, take a look at the homes that were listed, this is also a statistic that's tended to be pretty steady in Los Gatos until recently. Um, while a lot of the county has been hit with l l huge numbers of foreclosures and short sales, Los Gatos has still remained sort of resistant to that trend. Not a lot of foreclosures, not a lot of short sales. In fact, no short sales sold in Los Gatos in the month of January and only one foreclosure. And frankly, there just aren't that many of them. So it's a pretty rare occurrence. As you can see through most of the time when this market's been turning down through 2006, 2007, and 2008, the, the amount of homes that were added to the market in January remained relatively flat. We see an increase in 2009, which may indicate that sellers out there are trying to take advantage of what they perceive as their better market in Los Gatos, uh, allowing them to, to cash out at a time when they're concerned their homes might be going down in price. Now, the new listings are actually up 29.17% from the same time last year. That's 14 more homes listed in January of 2009 than January of 2008 for a grand total of 62 homes listed in Los Gatos. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the sold numbers and see what we can learn from that. Now as you can see, it's a pretty disappointing performance compared to last year. We've actually had steady sales declines in Los Gatos since 2007. This particular uh, month, sales were down 43.75% from the same time last year. So that resulted in seven fewer homes being sold in January of 2009 compared to January of 2008. That gave us a grand total of nine homes sold. Now, as I usually like to do, I like to compare the inventory and sold numbers to give us an idea of how long it would take us to sell off the inventory if all the numbers stayed as they are right now. We find that in January of 2009, it would take us 17.5 months to sell off all of the inventory that we currently have. Another way of thinking of this number is for all you sellers out there, how much competition is there for each buyer? So for each home that sells, there are about 17 homes trying to get sold on the market. So competition right now is very stiff. Uh, that's then this number number has gotten worse since last month where it stood at 8.7. Now what's interesting is the ratio for the county was 8.4. So in a, in, a, in a relatively unusual situation, Los Gatos is not doing as well as the average county area. Now this is actually the second month in a row we've seen this trend where Los Gatos is not performing as well as the average for the county. And that's fairly concerning considering the fact that for years Los Gatos has always overperformed or outperformed the county in general and been one of the really one of the benchmark communities that people could count on staying very stable throughout this downturn in the market. I think one problem is there are so many foreclosures and short sales in other parts of the county that a lot of folks' attention has been turned there as they want to take advantage of these chances and opportunities in the market to perhaps acquire an investment property. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the same numbers, but this time we'll look at them going just straight back in time. So not just one single month, but just chronologically back month to month to September of 2007. Now, remember, as you see the fluctuations here, you need to take into account the seasonal influences involved. You can see back in November and December is when we had our lowest inventory numbers. That's fairly typical for wintertime. And then we got our, our second dip here in November, December of 2008. What's interesting is, is the entire, just the whole trend has been moved up. The relationship from one month to the next has been more or less the same, but the whole 
spectrum of homes, the, the, the inventory of homes has just dramatically increased since last winter, and we just really didn't deplete that supply. If you look at September and October and November, where we, where we had unusual peaks in inventory, those homes just didn't get sold. Um, if you look at September, October, November of last year, we had uh, some increases there as well just before the winter time, but they were they were a bit more mild. So, and the, and the trend here, clearly drawn by this line that goes across the top of these bars, indicates the trend of the inventory, and it's it's really very clear what direction it's headed. And I don't think that's going to be changing anytime soon. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the homes that were listed, we can see still an increasing trend, but much more mild than the inventory increase. But this will continue to play into increasing Los Gatos' uh, inventory problem of having far too many homes on the market for the number of buyers that are out there. Uh, do, can we get any good information from this as far as being able to project what we might see in the future? Well, we can see that in December of last year, we saw an increase between December and January, between two, December 2007 and January of 2008. We see the same thing here, um, more of a marked increase in listings in January of 2009. Um, so a lot of folks have decided to put their homes on the market in January of 2009, and there just weren't as many folks at the same time last year. The general trend is the same. If we continue to project these forward, it would be logical to assume that we're going to see even more increases in, in, in homes listing over the coming months as we did last year between January and March. We saw quite a bit of an increase with sort of a flattening out from April all the way until July. I don't see any real reason to, to question whether or not that's going to be the way it happens this year. It, it, it may uh, do about the same, but I think what we'll see is just increasing inventory numbers as we move forward. That's going to be inventory and uh, listing numbers. They're just going to carry on through the season. I think we'll just see a lot of the, the same trends that we did last year, which isn't good. We, we, we definitely need to see more sales. Now, finally, if we take a look at the sales, we can see the sales numbers have been relatively flat, almost completely unchanged. If you average about the, the period we're looking at here, um, that's not good. When you have increasing listings with an increasing inventory and not any type of increasing sales, uh, that's a bad thing. And that just, all that means is that we're going to continue to accumulate more and more homes. Now, if we just do a month-to-month -month comparison, December of 2008 to January of 2009, inventory is up 6.76%. That's 10 more homes on the market in January than there were in December. New homes that, or homes that were listed in the month of January up 93.75% from uh, December to January, and that's an increase of 30 homes. So 30 more homes were listed in January than in December. And then as far as sales are concerned, down 43.75%. That's a total of seven fewer homes sold in the month of January than, the, than in the month of December. Now let's go ahead and jump forward to home prices, and this will give us a good idea of, of what the trend has been. Now, as you can see, not as big of a dramatic drop as some other communities in Santa Clara County. If you listen to any of my other presentations on this, you, you know there are communities out there that have been really hard hit uh, and are seeing extreme drops in their average home prices. We've been able to weather this fairly well. In fact, on average, uh, Los Gatos was actually seeing month to month and year to year increases in average price uh, right up until 2008 uh, when things started to actually decline a little bit. And we actually saw a little more fluctuation. 2008, I guess I'd call the pivot year for Los Gatos when we started to see those negative market influences playing in. Uh, now, the average home price stands at $1,557,388 in the month of January. That's a 5.81% decrease from the same month last year. That's a chain, dollar change of $96,049. If we take a look at the median, we can see that the median is actually higher than the average in Los Gatos. And that's not horribly unusual for Los Gatos. Uh, what that basically tells us is more homes sold at the high end or, or more so homes sold above the average price than below the average price, uh, which is kind of interesting to note. That's just sort of the dynamic of Los Gatos. It's a slightly, it's a different market. If you're, if you're, you don't use the same techniques to get a home sold in Los Gatos that you might use, say, in Almaden or Morgan Hill or some other community, uh, it's a little bit different in Los Gatos, and, and folks need to keep that in mind when they're trying to get their homes sold. Uh, now, the median change was down 2.34%. Uh, that's a $40,000 uh, change in median from the same time last month. Uh, median price stood at $1,672,500. Now, just I like to also sort of calibrate you to the highest and lowest numbers when we, when we talk about average price. The highest price single-family residential home in Los Gatos was on 15921 Quail Hill Road. That sold for $2,800,000, and it listed originally for $3,599,000. 
So there was a pretty substantial uh, drop in price taken there uh, of about eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. The cumulative days on market for that property was one hundred and seventy two days. Now, what's interesting about that particular property is it had actually been on the market for longer than that. The original asking price was higher, but it was taken off of the market last year for about four months um, and then put back on the market. So when that happens, it loses its connection to uh, the previous listing information. If that listing information had held held tight to the, to the listing, it, it obviously would have been uh, uh, even more depressing numbers as far as how much below listing and how many days on the market that property had been around. Now, the lowest... Single, uh, let's see, the lowest price single family residential home was on 15472 Benedict Lane. That property sold for $635,000 and it was originally listed for $799,800. That property was on the market for 49 days. Now, the average price per square foot in Los Gatos for January of 2009 was $593.83. Last month's average price per square foot was $571.54. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the same numbers just going back chronologically now all the way back to September of 2007. We'll be able to see some, uh, get, just sort of get an idea of the trend here. Now the, the price is actually looking uh, fairly flat. Uh, we, we saw some lower prices in September, but I mean, if, if you're sort of just stepping back and trying to get an idea of what the, the general trend of the average price is, it's, it's actually relatively flat. The median is is a good indicator of where the where the distribution of these homes is as far as where they're being bought so for instance back in april of 2008 far more homes that were below the average cost were being sold than above the average cost above the average price same went for august september and october and november december we had those two numbers pretty well close together were more of an even distribution about the same number of homes above asking price as uh, above average price being sold below average price um, let's see, the percentage price change from December to January was an increase of 5.36%. That's a dollar value of $79,227. The median price change was up 16.35% with a dollar value amount of $235,000. And remember, that uh, is all based on nine homes that sold in January of 2009. And just as an interesting note, usually at this point, I'd have a slide that would show the layout of how many homes were short sales, how many homes were foreclosures, and how many were conventional. But Los Gatos is one of those communities where short sales and foreclosures happen so rarely there's no point in really putting a graph like that up. Uh, but this month, we did have one home sell that was a foreclosure sold, sale in Los Gatos, only one out of the nine. So uh, nothing statistically significant, but, but still that's about 11% of the uh, homes that were out that, that sold in the month. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how many days it's taking to get property sold in Los Gatos in January of 2009. Now we'll see that we've actually had pretty good performance relating to these numbers. Um, the days to sell change is up 31.94 percent, so it's it's it, the 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 days it's taking to getting property sold is up. 31.94, that's an increase of 23 days from the same time in 2008. Uh, overall, we've Los Gatos has actually been performing very well. Other areas have much higher average uh, days on market uh, for, for their properties. Now, the lowest days on market in Los Gatos was three. The highest days on market was 225. And as I usually like to do, let me lay out sort of how these numbers broke up. No homes were sold in the first week that they were listed in Los Gatos in January of 2009. Uh, one home sold in 8 to 30 days. Five homes sold in 31 to 90 days. Two homes sold in 90 to 180 days. And one home sold in over 180 days. 11% of the homes sold in 30 days or less. Um, I think if you want to calibrate yourself, it really depends on the type of property that you have in Los Gatos. But I think that the 95 is a is a fairly realistic number. I think if you're trying to make plans uh, based on this, I would say 90 would be at the outside how long you'd be looking at getting your home sold. But that assumes a lot of things. First, it assumes you have an agent who knows what they're doing. And they're, with the way the market is today and the way agents are today, that's no, really no guarantee. In fact, the odds are against you. Uh, in most cases, as to whether or not you're going to find an agent who knows what they're doing. Next is going to be that once you've established what the right price is for your home, you list it at that amount. You don't shoot for some amount over, assuming that you can always lower your price. What we're finding in today's market is that first, those first few days, that first week that you are on the multiple listing service, uh, that f that f 
first impression is more important than ever as folks out there who are shopping are really dismissing homes that don't have all the information or don't have all the photos or don't have everything that they need to decide whether or not they want to look at that property because buyers are finding so many properties showing up when they do a search they can afford to be very picky so your property needs to when it gets listed needs to be 100 percent ready all the marketing has to be ready to go at the same time and the mls listing needs to be going uh, only with everything in it right from the get- get-go, or or you're you're shooting yourself in the foot, frankly. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to days to sell in past months, and see if uh, we can see any trends there, or at least determine what kind of a change we've seen over over the past months. Now, what's interesting is that um, the change between December and January is actually zero percent. Uh, there was no change in the. Uh, total days it took to get a home sold between January of 2009 and December of 2008. So at least there's some stability there in the, no, in the days to sell. Um, we're at a high point really for, uh, unless you count February. February is an interesting month because we the reason why that had such a spike is we had some increased sales in February and what that resulted in was uh, a lot of properties that have been on the market for a very long time selling and that increased the average days on market. Um, as I've said with other presentations, when you get into smaller communities like Los Gatos, sometimes these numbers are so small that you can see them seem to fluctuate wildly. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't make any hard and fast statements about where we're going based on just this month's performance. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of months. But what we can do is look back over the last, the first quarter of 2009 and see what that tells us about where the market's heading. And those will be key numbers for folks that are out there looking to be buyers or sellers or investors as we approach what's typically the selling time of the summer months. And just to wrap it up, here's a quick look at where some of these properties were located. They're pretty much scattered all around Los Gatos. Um, there's no real clustering here that indicates one area is, is potentially hotter than the other. Um, the usual areas that tend, tend to, be, to be popular with folks who are out there shopping, obviously, are the downtown areas um, right, uh, right on the, the west side of the freeway. And then, of course, Los Gatos Boulevard, the homes that are about four or five blocks up in either either side, going down Los Gatos Boulevard up to Lark. Um, we I'll usually see some good sales there, but what's funny is we're seeing almost none of that here. Uh, no real big conclusions to draw from this. I, I, I hope it's just informative for some folks to see where, where some homes have been getting sold. Now, I appreciate you taking the time to... Listen to what I have to say on these market analysis presentations. If you'd like to look at any of my other uh, video presentations on the markets in Santa Clara County or any of my weekly podcasts, if you'd like to listen to any of those or read any of my articles on real estate, you can find those at my website at www.soldbyrobert.com. Also, if you're interested in getting in touch with me via email, you can do so at robert at soldbyrobert.com. Or if you prefer to speak over the phone, I'd be happy to do that. Just dial 408-852-0525 and you can get in touch. If you prefer to use AOL Instant Messenger, Google Talk, or Yahoo IM, my screen name there is The Rebel Broker. And on Skype, my screen name is simply Rebel Broker. Referrals are always appreciated. If you or anyone you know is interested in real estate in the Silicon Valley area, please feel free to get in touch. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. And finally, I can find the right agent for you no matter where you are in the United States. I know exactly the right questions to ask to pick out the right agent for whatever it is you're searching for. So if you want to get in touch with me using any of the methods above, I'd be happy to talk to you about what your needs are. And if I can't help you, I can find an agent who is... Uh, as professional as I am and, and, and feels the same way about doing real estate the right way. I thank you all for coming out and I look forward to talking to you next time.